Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 303 of the Drunk Dashers Podcast. I'm host as always, I'm Tyler, and joining me, we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Sir Colonel Cables. What's up, buddy? Hey, Tyler. After an exhausting week, I am finally relaxing and actually getting <laughs> stuff done for the most part. <laughs> yeah. I know the week has been sort of like hectic at the workplace and stuff, but uh, hell, you and I managed to go through and uh, finish up finish up a game plus all this other stuff so i'm doing pretty good how about yourself uh doing all right too um yeah finish up the game last night was awesome after uh like you it was a very long exhausting week of work and then uh uh we was funny we were talking before the uh before we 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 streamed some last night and before we started streaming we were talking about starbucks and i mentioned to you that I just found out from somebody at work that there's a, uh, it's like Vente is their large. There's a yep. extra large size called uh, Trenta. Yep. And so, I don't know, like four hours ago, I went to Starbucks. And I'm like, oh, because I heard it's only for certain things. They only have it for a few drinks. Well, I always get like a mocha iced coffee there. Yeah. They, they do it for ice and the refreshers. I don't know what the refreshers are, but they're like strawberry drinks or whatever. But, um, yeah, so I got one of those. So like, I am like wide awake right now. Wide awake right now. Hold on, now I'm talking. My my, <laughs> I'm moving faster. My mouth is right now. Um, it is like midnight my time, and I'm like a million miles an hour. Uh, so yeah, I took I took a Tylenol PM got about an hour ago to try to help counteract it, but it's still not working. Uh, oh. Yeah, so that was a mistake on my end. But I had to know. I now I know. Uh, don't do that. Got it. Um, but yeah, I'm doing okay. I took like a six hour nap earlier today. I had like a very, nice. uh, very busy morning. I, like I just knocked out everything I wanted to get done this weekend. All my, you know, all my little chores and stuff like that. Got everything done. Uh, so it's a very, you know, not exhausting, but it was a, it was a very, uh, accomplished morning. So then I, yeah. I sat down, pulled up YouTube, took a six hour nap and it was amazing. Uh, I haven't took it. That a, sounds wonderful. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't taken a nap. Like it sucks because you know you, I lost most of my Saturday, but you know I've, I you know I needed I had a really shitty uh, week of sleep, so uh, that was very nice. Uh, but yeah, uh, feeling good. You know, it's uh, time to record. We're recording now, so it's feeling good. So I guess we should uh, we should jump right into. You want to just talk about what we've been playing? And just jump yeah. into. All right, might uh, as well. So before we get to what we played individually, uh, let's talk about the game we we played together. That um, sounds good. So last night, Friday night, Gables and I uh, streamed on uh, Twitch.tv slash Colonel Gables. Uh, check that one out. Follow him out there, please. Um, but we finished uh, A Way Out. Yes, um, we did. Yeah, it took us a little more than three hours last night to finish it. Um, I think the first time we spent like... All right, good. Tony or who the hell? Someone just coughed up something over there. Um, but um, the took us like the first time we played it was like two hours. So it was a little, it was probably about five hours in length to beat. Right. Uh, but yeah, so we we both finished it. So I guess I mean, what what did you think of the game? I thought the game in and of itself was a good quality game. It definitely had a lot of good high points. The story was. The story was great and stuff up until the very end and stuff. And yeah. uh, what I would have wanted to have taken back a little bit is try to do a little bit more of the side mission yeah. stuff. Just the side things because those were pretty much the most interesting part of the game in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. You know, seeing what you could actually do. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Gables and I, like, because there's just, like, weird, like, there's, like, little, you can throw darts, uh, play horseshoes. Um, arm wrestling contest where uh, Gables and I nearly both um, tapped square until our arms fell off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we streamed it actually, and I went through and I like highlighted a bunch of videos on uh, uh, on my personal Twitch account, but I put them on our uh, our YouTube page, uh, Drunk Dash Nerds. Check them out on there because that you're right. Like I wish we could have we would have done a little more of that. Of like going around and finding out what kind of things we could just done in, in the environment, because uh, yeah, that was some of the best parts. Was like the like like the arm wrestling contest, uh, playing Connect Four. Uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. What else did we do? Like there was that time we both sat in the swing. Uh, that was really funny. <laughs> that was hilarious. 
I just go over there and stuff, and you just, just you've like uh, figured out that you could actually go and get like the the prompt and stuff to sit on the swing. It's like, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, go over here. Like, yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden, we just you and I both sit on the thing at the same time, and it's <laughs> one of the most awkward looking yeah. shit that I've ever seen. Yeah. Like <laughs> two just... grown ass adults swinging on a swing. Yeah. Almost. Uh. <laughs> It was awesome. Yeah, I, it was. It's definitely one of those games. Like, if you would have played this and it was like a single player game, it, it's like they don't like the gameplay portions. None of them were like excellent. Like, there's sneaking missions. There's like, yeah, there's shooting parts. Um, there's like some, uh, like a cover base. Like, it's like there's like very much like Uncharted like uh, shooting mechanics in this game. And they all were just, they're not really well done. Like you definitely like no. you played way better versions of like all of these for Game Kinks, but playing this game with a friend, it's really the, with the split screen and the way the whole game works. Where like it will like take like if something important is going on with uh, your screen with like when Gables is playing as Leo, like you'll get the most of the screen if not all of the screen. Um, yeah, I think playing the game with somebody else is what makes that game great, and especially you know, like yeah, the ending was uh, the ending is rough without spoiling anything. Oh um, yeah, but I think that's what makes it more impactful is you know playing that with a friend and going through that dude, with them. I don't think I've ever had an experience in the game where it's like, dude, it's like this. This ending was messed up to yeah. a certain extent because it's like you go through all the things together and stuff, and like uh, you're presented with like a sit like these different types of situations and stuff like that, where you think it's gonna be one thing, but all of a sudden it twists around into something completely out of left field, and it's like, did that really just happen? And wow, you know what? This <laughs> this is definitely something that uh, I may not want to play again, you know, as a result, you know, fall all the way through. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it's definitely, I could definitely see that because uh, it is like you're very conflicted going into the end there. Uh, and then the ending, uh, and I looked up the other, there's two endings. Um, and I looked up the other one and they're both uh, downers for the most part. Uh, yeah. There's not a good, there's not a good ending to this game. Um, no. But, I don't know. I mean, like besides all that, like it's not like it's not like a terrible ending per se. It's just it's it's rough. It's a rough ending. Um, Even despite the ending and stuff like that, the whole the whole adventure to get to that point was definitely probably the most memorable time that I've had with that game. Because mm-hmm. you have all these different situations that both uh, Vincent and Leo get themselves into, alongside the different type of subsidiary like diversion stuff in between each missions to where it feels like an intermission to another mission. Yeah. Pretty much. Because that's quintessentially what it felt like. Like, say, we at one minute we're at a ranch or something like that, trying to... Uh, get this like old car together again and stuff while like letting out the horses to distract this elderly couple so we can do this the next minute we're like on these bicycles right yeah. and stuff just trying to outrun these freaking like uh <laughs> these freaking like uh mobsters i, I guess I don't these know mobsters sure. or something like that yeah which kind of reminds me the whole there were situations that really reminded me of the movie scarface yes. almost to the nth degree that was kind of funny, sort of cheesy in some of the ways, but at the same time, they were overly just like. Some of the parts were just overly just dumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, I yeah, I agree with you. It's definitely. I mean, this is the game relies more heavily on the story and the characters, uh, and I than than the uh, than the gameplay itself. But yeah, I agree. Like yeah. that that whole section there, uh, it's tough to talk about with being a story based game, uh, but. That section you're talking about there is definitely it was like it. It feels like the, the this part is like we love Scarface. Let's do our best Scarface uh, moment here, and then um, all the uh, I like it's just kind of crazy. Like like we were talking about like yeah, there's some uncharted elements to it, but then there's like elements when it's like a it's like top down, like almost like a top. You said like a top down racer, like you're chasing this guy, and like the the way you're moving and running around, it's like from a top down view. Uh, right. The best part, my favorite part of the whole game was the uh, the hospital. Um, oh yeah. You get to so like um, minor spoilers, I guess. But at one point, about halfway through the game, you go to, you go to the hospital, and the cops show up, and you have to you have to escape from the cops. And it's really, I think it's really cool how it's done, where like it jumps back and forth, where like it's the like Leo 
gets the whole screen then it'll, like the way the camera zooms then it'll be vincent so like gables and i are like taking turns uh doing doing uh like escaping from the cops and i thought it was, right. like, it's like a 10 15 minute moment but it, it it's very long but it that was really cool and you had probably like the coolest moment where it turned into oh, like yeah. a 2d platform or a uh, fighter it and, kind of reminded me of freaking Streets of Rage in yeah. a certain aspect because here I am, we're facing off against these like these enemies and stuff. All of a sudden, I get to this like side view. It's like, wait, wait, this feels very familiar here. And all of a sudden, it's like I'm having the different types of weapons, and I'm literally just tossing freaking weapons and executing Superman punches. I'm like, what yeah. the hell is going on? I like the end, you throw you throw the lamp and hit the guy in the head. Uh, <laughs> that was my favorite part. It's like, what? Yeah. Uh, it was it's it's a really cool game, really fun experience. Uh, I mean, like I said, it, it's a downer that you ha- you have to play with two people. But like I said, if the, if you play if this was a game you played by yourself, uh, it would just it would just it'd be like eh, it'd be an okay game, you know. I don't even yeah, I don't know even what? know most people probably wouldn't even finish it. I I don't I'm not too sure whether anybody would have given this game really a, a second glance or something if this was a single player experience. Yeah. This game is so dependent upon the co-op portions of it to where I actually feel like that it would have been a huge detriment if somebody were to say play it single player wise by themselves, which honestly that's kind of understanding why probably the game developers in the beginning just decided this is going to be entirely a co-op experience yeah. to the nth degree. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely something I've never actually played before in terms of, like, cohesiveness. I mean, I've never played, like, a co-op game of this nature to where it actually feels like we are uh, going through and elevating something just with each time, you know? It feels like it's balanced to some degrees and stuff, although, let's see, story portions were okay and stuff, but uh, some of the technical stuff, some of the technical stuff was really funny. I'm um, like the time with like uh, our characters are playing basketball, right? In the in the freaking physics of that. <laughs> oh yeah, that 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 yeah, and I kept trying to dunk on your son. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, the whole the whole freaking pass mechanic. I'm trying to pass, and all of a sudden it's like, uh, like I'm just shooting just randomly. Yeah, like you're just like you go to pass and you just chuck the ball on the other side of the court. Uh, Considering this comes from the company EA that makes like NBA Live, yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, it's actually, but it's it's better than NBA Live, possibly. Oh, <laughs> um, probably. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely. I mean, I would say it's one. Of, it's probably it is for sure the most unique game I've ever I've played this year, um, and maybe one of the most more unique games that I've possibly ever played. Just like you know, it's, it's a gutsy call going with this. Uh, you know, having to play it with with multiplayer, you know, with two people. Yeah. Because um, I'm sure it's going to turn a lot of people off. And I think that's part of the reason why they probably made it so, like, you can, you could, uh, you only had to have one copy of the game and you can, uh, a friend of your friend could play with you as long as he's playing with you. Right. Um, so, but still, even with that, like I, like I said, when I bought it initially, I didn't realize it was a two-player only game. And, like, if right. I would have known that, I don't know if... I'm I'm happy I made that mistake, and not knowing it because I don't know if I would have replayed it without without you know with with knowing that having that knowledge I would I don't think I would have bought it, um, or at least not when I did. Right. Um. But you know, I, yeah, I, I'm glad I'm glad we both played it. Uh, yeah. Because it's it's definitely on my short list for uh, game of the year right now. Oh yeah, same here, definitely. Yeah, like like I said, like it doesn't. Like I said, the gameplay portions. If you, if you're looking for a game that's like, if you're like a guy that loves like, uh, like co-op games and playing games with your friends, but you you like playing like Destiny or Gears, or like really refined like uh, games, like really fun uh, gameplay. You know, whether it's a sports game, a shooting game, whatever. Uh, this is not the game for you at all. Oh, most definitely not. Uh, it could, but it's just it's more about the moments, doing the side stuff was definitely the the peaks of the game um like just like i said going around playing stupid uh arcade games and um sitting on the couch watching the moon landing um <laughs> and like and, and like just the moment the moment stuff with the story and the characters but yeah if you're if you're someone that you want like a fun game because like yeah there's, there's a lot of shooting in the last uh probably hour of the game and it's fine uh but it is it is not like Destiny, yeah, that was anywhere kind of, close to Destiny honestly, or anything. 
the whole aspects of the whole shooting mechanics and all the other types of combat, some actually kind of felt very out of place for this style of game. Yeah. You know, it just kind of felt like it was kind of shoehorned in out of nowhere. It's like, you get to certain parts in the story and stuff, and all of a sudden you just have these particular types of, like, weapons that you, now you have to use. And some of it, it just felt like kind of cut and paste from other games of its type, like, say, like, Gears of War or, like, Uncharted, to the extent where it's like, why in the hell are these shooting games involved in this in this portion right now because this does not make a sense really like in forms of what the game has been up to that point mm -hmm. and at the same point it's like over half not not even like not even like uh let's see i think those action parts were actually played almost the last uh quarter of the game mm -hmm. itself those really weren't like anything up until like around the last couple of missions really having all these different types of, like, uh, weapons that you could use and stuff. You don't get these weapons and stuff the late game, but up until that point, you're going through these different types of scenarios and puzzles, the escape stuff, the whole elements of co-op teamwork and stuff, and all of a sudden, you're thrown into a situation to where now both of you are handed, like, pretty much get guns and stuff like that. You gotta take out these waves of pretty much enemies. It's like, it felt kind of jarring at mm. points, but at the same time, they tried to work it in narratively to why the situation is going, which kind of felt like it was just totally just unbelievable in and of itself because it didn't really, in my honest opinion, did not make sense narratively why they would have to do something like this yeah. to begin with. And, like, how they get to this specific point and know exactly where exactly they need to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when they were trying to find the location of the this the, the last per that, uh, that person's, like, a um, bow to begin with. Yeah, Harvey. Um, yeah, Harvey and stuff. It, it's definitely funny because, like, Leo is, like, he's a thief. Uh -huh. And uh, Vincent was arrested for, um, like... Uh, what was it for? Like basically, he was Bank an accountant. Fraud, pretty much, I think it was like yeah, it was fraud. Like he was uh, working for like the mob to like basically make their clean their money for them. So they went from like this is who they are to like the like you're killing like fifty guys. But I mean, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's weird. I mean, like Uncharted, like Nathan Drake kills thousands oh. of guys. He's he's like a he's a mass murderer. But we like we, we, he's funny. We love him. So it, yeah. Oh well, yeah, that's there's definitely a good example of that inside this game too, where it's like we get past this certain like this mission point where we have to dodge away from this like hitman, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, we pretty much we take out the hitman, and like right as his corpse is all dead, like right in front of us, we start to go into like this soft like like a uh, like emotional type of moment or something yeah. like that, and it's like. And it, it, it all of a sudden it pans out and you see the dead body or something like in the cutscene itself. It's like oh, what? Yeah, cause it's like I'm, you, you just literally just murdered this guy and you can't tell about anything else other than that. I'll give him. I'll give him. It was self defense. I'll give him that. <laughs> but yeah, it's like I'm pretty sure neither one of you. Like you, I'm sure Leo's probably hurt some people, but I'm doubt Vincent's really done anything. But like, you guys just yeah. killed a guy, and we're just gonna move along. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It's there's. Def, like there's definitely issues with the game um as far as like narratively that goes but yes um like i said though uncharted is the same way where he's like hey he's this charming guy uh nathan drake is but he also kills hundreds of people every game uh we just kind of yeah, gloss that's, over it. that's very true and people are so quick to forget it's like nathan drake in and of himself is sort of like a mass murderer yeah <laughs> so like I, if I'm willing to let it go on Uncharted, I'm willing to kind of let it slide a little bit in this game too. But it was, right. yeah, it was still, it was very jarring. Like you said, it was very jarring and out of place where like the first four hours, you, yeah, you, you hold, you have a gun, but I don't think you ever fire at once. Um, all of the fighting is like, uh, kind of, um, what is that called? F, uh, um, shit. But like it's, it's timing based. Um, quick time events. events. Thank you. Um, and, like in the, like the, like that last section, but you know it's whatever. It's still fine. Like, uh, like I said, it's not it's not great shooting, but it's fine. Uh, right. but yeah, no, I had a blast with this game. It's definitely fun. If I would, like I said, if you are someone that likes great tight gameplay, this is not for you. But if you want to like a fun, uh, if you just want a fun, really interesting story, um, with some with a friend, this is like a perfect game. Like I would. Like, yes, it is. If you can get past, 
not having a perfect gameplay, this is it's, it's fun because definitely like there's some really cool moments in that game. Just and like just in the story, there's really cool moments. But then like yeah, you walk around the environments you're in and just finding weird shit like the the yep. wife waiting for her husband to get home with a baseball bat because she's he's cheating on her. Yep. Um, is it's just all, it's fun. It was a fun game. I it, like you know it took us five hours to beat. Um, and like I said, we played it for three hours last night, and that time just flew by for me. It didn't feel like it we did. played it for three hours. It did fly by. Yeah, it was like we started playing. I look and I look at the clock, and it's uh, it's almost midnight, and we're like, I'm like, oh shit, we've been playing this for a couple hours now. And the next thing I know, we're at the, <laughs> we're in the last cutscene. I'm like, oh wow, we're done. This is oh, it's over. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was fun. I I, I think you you kind of agree with that too. Yeah, I agree with that wholeheartedly because that was definitely that was definitely like a fast playthrough. We did it in like around two sittings, mm-hmm. essentially. Yeah, I thought it was going to take us three or four to beat, and I think that's kind of just represents how much we enjoyed that game, uh, especially last yeah. night because there was a lot of fun stuff that happened last night playing oh, that God. game. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I hope I, I like to see more stuff like that. I hope we get um, something different or something else like that from him, um, from them, uh, and also uh, fuck the Oscars. Uh, so, um speaking of actually the game awards are on thursday yes they are so that's gonna be exciting a lot of uh it's a lot of uh rumors are swollen right now some lots of new game announcements on the horizon yep yeah possibly there's like some leaks and stuff kind of sort of happening and then also um uh, another thing happening this is because of uh with psx not happening this year uh i don't know if people may Maybe we're not listening to, but kind of funny. Uh, Greg Miller and everything. Uh, they are throwing together their own uh, kind of like direct, basically uh, called kind. Of, it's called the kind of funny game showcase. Uh, okay. I want to throw out there for people. Uh, they have, as of right now, I think over sixty games to show. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's, it's happening this Saturday. I want to say it's going to be. I can't remember if it's ten o'clock or noon Pacific one of those uh yeah so it's gonna be like like i said because psx isn't happening uh they're doing their own thing it was kind of cool i was listening to their um just just for people to know i support them on patreon patreon both their pages so i get um like you know donate i give them money every month uh but i was listening to their their like their game of greggy show that comes out it'll come out this friday but patreon gets it a week early and they did like a behind the scenes discussion about it and uh everything that they're showing uh all that all 60 plus games that they're showing um, right. they're all from indie games to there's a couple bigger budget games like sega's involved uh, right. i guess i know that um but everything they're showing like they're not going to show like trailers of games you've seen eight times already like they oh, have good. to have something to announce at this showcase to show them my dog's drinking very loudly in the background sorry uh uh-huh. but they said the policy they had going into this is that everything, uh, everything they're going to show off, has to like have some sort of whether it, uh, whether it's a release date or some whole new uh, uh, mode for the game it has to be something new. It can't just be like, hey, here's the a trailer for um, I don't know what's it, Days Gone, you know? Like right. no, there's got to be something there. It can't just be a trailer. For, it's either a, a revealing for the first time. Release date something so uh i don't really know like what to expect or you know like, i don't really have any uh real hype level for it right now it's because i don't really know what's going on with it but i just want to well, yeah of course point that out for everybody to know because i don't know how big of a thing it is like um i know like a couple people like ign and game informer a few people have talked about it um but it's not like a huge it's not like a it's not getting like the kind of uh publicity like a psx or uh two xboxes x018 did last on month what will they announce you know yeah i'm sure i'm sure mo- we'll hear a lot about after the fact but i just want to point out to people i'm really excited i'm looking forward to that I, like I think it is i think it's noon my time 10 o'clock pacific time on saturday so it should be a fun it's gonna be a fun thursday friday saturday with it's kind of what game awards uh friday we're getting a game that i've petitioned the internet not to talk about until friday um but you guys all should know what i'm talking about because i cannot take it much longer oh Uh, i know my penis can only get so erect people (laughs) uh i i keep seeing stuff online about it 
I'm tired of it. Every time I go on YouTube, I see more and more videos about stuff coming out about it. Not like leaks, but just more and more like, eh, here's some tips and tricks and uh, stuff like that. And potentially rumors, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, I can't take much more of it. Gables, I'm, gonna, I'm about to lose my damn mind. Uh, I'm going to figure <laughs> out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like the episode of South Park where Cartman freezes, tries to freeze himself because you can't wait for the Wii to come out. I'm, I'm about to get to that <laughs> point where I, like, I'm going to freeze myself for like the next five days and then like wake up Thursday night before I can watch the game awards and then like get, you know, go make it through work and then go and get home and play smash. Damn it. I said the word. Damn it. I can't help it. Ah, <laughs> but it's going to be good. It's going to be a good week next week. I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, I guess back to what we've been playing though. Um, uh, Gables, what have you been playing besides a way out? Well, let's see. I had been playing a bit of, uh, more of Let's Go Pikachu. That has definitely been a topic thing that I've been trying to finish a little bit before when Smash comes out. Ah, can't say it. <laughs> so, definitely, I am now 20 hours in. I was playing a little bit before we were recording and stuff, and I finally caught myself my first shiny Pokemon in this game, which took me around, oh my gosh, 90 attempts, actually. How it got so long is because I decided to wait to a specific point in the game to where my party would be strong enough, plus I would have enough money to buy enough Pokeballs and everything else to try to attempt it. So what I did is I started catching Pidgey near the Fuchsia City, and then I used Fly all the way back to Pallet Town, went to their grassy area and stuff, and I tried to do the whole the catch chain link combos and stuff. So the catch combo stuff works interestingly enough to where different types of perfect stats different types of like uh like not just nature's stuff but the overall the overall thing that you do with this what you do with this option and stuff it allows you to it allows like more shiny pokemon to appear more frequently the more pokemon of that type you catch so basically for example i caught a hell of a lot of pidgey I caught like about 90 Pidgey in a row, and that's how I got my shiny Pokemon, my shiny Pidgey. It was, oh boy, it was definitely an interesting experience to say the least, because all these different Pokemon would spawn and stuff, and it took me literally like about two or three hours just to try to get this darn Pokemon going, but uh, it was definitely a satisfying feeling. A great bit of satisfaction spending that long and then finding it just randomly just pop up on the screen and uh when i went to go and turn in all the pidgey to professor oak <laughs> i had maximized all of the quick candy that i earned from uh all those pidgey so quintessentially i have about 999 quick candy and i'm really thinking that maybe i could go ahead and quite possibly try to sell them off. <laughs> you only get like ten dollars for each one, though, so you don't get a lot. I know, right? Ten dollars times about nine nine nine, which is quintessentially just like a like what nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars quintessentially, I think. Yeah, that, potentially. Yeah. yeah, that doesn't sound like too much, honestly. But uh, or no, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, about ten thousand dollars, basically. I know that's not very much in order to try to turn in stuff, but what I did earn was a bunch of Pidgey candy. And oh, let me tell you, <laughs> the specific candy for individual Pokemon make this game so much easier to play. And I'll tell you why. With these specific Pokemon candy, it gives them about a boost to every stat, to every stat that they have by one. So, whenever you use a candy upon that particular Pokemon, aimed for that particular Pokemon, every stat increases by one, and if you have a bunch of them, you could actually stack a whole bunch, and there's no limit to it. There's absolutely no limit to it that I found out. So, I had about 63 Pidgey candy inside of my inventory stuff, and I looked at my uh, current Pidgeot that I had at my party, and then I looked at my shiny Pidgey, I'm thinking, you know what, let's try this. So I use all my Pidgey candy on my shiny Pidgey that I just caught. It was already pretty close to the stats that I had for my Pidgeot <laughs> at level 46. And this is a level 5 Pidgey we're talking about. 
So, yeah, I'm kind of thankful that I did not use a lot of this candy at the beginning part of this game because it would have made it a hell of a lot easier in terms of uh, progressing to this particular point. So at this moment in time, this Pidgey is now in my party. It's now evolved into a Pidgeotto because of so much experience is gaining from beating random scrubs at the Splish Co. building. <laughs> <laughs> Going through Team Rocket and stuff. It was hilarious. I basically went into Splish Co., faced my first trainer. I had a level 5 Pidgey. I was holding my own against a level 38 Executor. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I... Didn't even get one-shotted. I just got maybe like a quarter of health away from that executor with a fly attack. I went first. I did this and that. I'm just like, my mind is literally blown right now because it's like, okay, if I can do that with a level 5 Pokemon, what's going to happen when it's fully evolved to that point? Am I going to defeat the Elite Four with just like a level 40 Pokemon? Because <laughs> if that's so, then that's going to be a pretty funny thing to watch. <laughs> But yes, my overall time with Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and stuff has been a great experience. It's definitely felt really lax so far. And like I said before, I'm 20 hours in. I'm I'm just past my fifth badge that I earned today. And I'm defeating Team Rocket inside Splish Co. So I got about three more gyms left and the Pokemon League. And capturing Mewtwo in Cerulean Cave. You know, kind of like how you would in the red, blue, and yellow. Mm-hmm. <sighs> But yeah, that's definitely, that's, this has definitely been a fun experience. But one of the last games that I have played that I want to touch upon was uh, a game that I was streaming earlier on today, Had a Full Boyfriend. <laughs> I've decided to return back to that game because I wanted to try to do something a little bit fun, a little bit quirky out of the ordinary and stuff for one of my streams. And to be perfectly honest with you, I was really surprised that I had a couple different watchers that were consistently watching the stream for the like the whole hour that it took me to go through the entirety of the game's narrative and stuff. So, what did I end up doing? I checked the trophy list in this game. There is about 14 different endings to this game. All of them are tied to like different options and branching trees and stuff that you could possibly do. So, what I ended up doing is I went through what I did the first time, and it was almost exactly the same thing as when I played through this game for the first time, where I got the whole Java Sparrow, Java Coffee Sparrow achievement or something by meeting this one person, this one, this one bird or something like a sparrow and stuff like that. And it's kind of funny, because your lead protagonist in this game is a female... And the name of the game is How to Full Boyfriend, right? And you can go through, like, the different types of options and stuff like that to uh, get these particular, like, uh, guy pigeons and all these guy birds and all this other stuff. But the option I end up getting is just the one where it's just, like, just the two the two girls at the end. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't intend for this to happen. This happened. <laughs> oh, I'm just saying. It's just, like, a funny coincidence and stuff that I get the same ending twice. And me just basically just kind of unaware, just going by gut feelings. Like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Oh, I got the same ending. Okay. But I really enjoyed the playthrough of it because it's like I was just doing basically what I'm doing. Just try to ad lib a little bit. The game was mostly text heavy. So I was just pretty much reading out loud while I'm just playing through the game. And I guess I, guess I had a couple of watches that really were enjoying it. Nobody commented, but the max amount of people that were watching at this point was like four. Mm. Cool. In the past hour that I was streaming. And that was fine. That was really fine. But uh, that's the games that I have been playing. But one thing I want to say at the moment is... I actually found a decent game collection. You know, game collection disc. While I was going through different types of errands today. So I was going to a pawn shop. And I looked through their various portions of games. And all of a sudden I see a PS4 game there. And... Uh, I see that they are having a 20% off game sale, and I see the Sega Genesis Collection for PS4 that not even released not too long ago. They're selling it new for $15. They're selling it new for like $30, right? And so, I get the game, I bought it for about 13 
like half the price of what it was initially selling for. And uh, from what I know and stuff, I haven't been able to play the game yet because I've been busy with other stuff. But at least I put it inside my PS4 and I've done like uh, the updates and everything to it. So I'll give you guys a little bit of an impression stuff next week in regards to this whole Sega Genesis collection alongside potentially beating Let's Go Pikachu, since I want to get that out of the way to make room for the game that should not be named. <laughs> it's, it's, our, it's our Voldemort until Friday. That's pretty much, yes. So what have you been playing, man? <clears throat> um, so I, like you, been playing Let's Go Pikachu. Um, I ended up actually finishing it last Sunday night. I, uh, Which surprises me, you finished a Pokemon game. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I haven't I haven't, I haven't done that since what po- I guess Pokemon X and was that 2013 so it's been a, it's been yes. quite a while um and you know my a lot of my opinions hold uh, stay true I I don't like the the catching mechanic I don't the Pokeball is I guess if you're gonna play the game with a Joy-Con or that that's the best way to play but I actually was talking to you you because I was with you when you're when you're getting the shiny P, uh, Pidgey. And yep. I started playing it as well, and I started using uh, the gyro stuff, and that's definitely the best way to play if you're going to be catching Pokemon. Yeah, that's wow. I wish I would have known that, uh, or I knew about it. I guess I would. I wish I would have tried that because I, I usually don't like the mode is definitely the best way. Yeah, and I, I usually hate like the gyro con- controls in, in games, but for just simply catching Pokemon, that's why it was so much easier. Um, didn't have. Pokeballs randomly flying all the way to the left when you threw it to the right. <laughs> I know, right? Um, yeah, so it, it definitely helps with that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I beat it. Um, I started playing it and I realized I got... Because I, I think when I talked to you guys last week, uh, I, I just got the 7th badge. Or I was almost, I was either... Yeah, I know, I just got the 7th badge. So I, 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 I started playing it. I just kind of like played for like a few hours. I uh, went through, uh, got the 8th eighth uh, and final gym uh, uh gym badge had a brain yep. fart there and then went uh went to the victory road did all that beat elite four it was, i don't know I, I beat the whole game i didn't lose a didn't have a single pokemon faint once um nice i, I went in and uh, my pidgey my pidgeot was my lowest level one at 59 but my venusaur uh blastoise charizard and my alone uh, marowak uh were all in the mid 60s and then my pikachu was in like the high 60s so i went in for the you know there was there's was a little bit of a challenge to the elite four but i was never in any like as far as like losing a pokemon there's a challenge uh but i was never right. in any danger of losing the battle um i went through and flew right through them i probably beat them and then the champion probably 20 minutes um and i have tons of money uh Pokemon are extremely powerful. I mean, it's an easy game. It's not. A, it's not a hard game. I mean, I'm sure no. if you don't, if you if you just skip all of the battle, like the tra- trainer battles, and do very little catching, it, it probably it can be very. It can be, it can be a difficult game. Like uh, I mean, I went in there, um, and my Pokemon were probably with the Elite Four, probably around five to ten levels above their strongest one. Yeah. Every battle, and then the last battle, I was a few levels higher than their strongest one. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely went in overpowered. But, I mean, I went in, I, I was having so much fun with the game. Just, like I said, the nostalgia kicking in, uh, all that, it, the music, everything about it was awesome. And yeah, I, I defeated every trainer that I, in the entire game that you can beat in the, in the main story. There's a bunch of post-game stuff um, that I won't talk, I won't spoil, but... Um, I caught, I caught, I beat them. I got Mewtwo. Um, I found some cool battles you can do after, after you beat the game. But for the most part, I don't like, I definitely want to go and do some of the, the battles you can do post post game stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's only a handful I actually want to do. Um, and feel like I could do without like spending, like I could definitely grind, uh, for a little while, but there's, there's definitely some like crazy stuff you can do that will cause, I mean, you could spend dozens of hours uh, to do the rest, um, but it does, right. it's not really it's fun. It's just grinding stuff that you have to do to get there. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I had a blast with the game overall. 
obviously. Uh, the, like I said, the, the catching mechanic and you, the Pokeball was not the most comfortable way of playing. Uh, that was the only real downside of the game, but the rest of the game, like I said, is an absolute blast and uh, one of the best games of the year for me so far. Um, so, yeah, uh, fantastic game. And then the other game I started playing, uh, only, I don't know, probably two, two and a half hours into, but uh, I don't know how long the game is. I don't think it's super long. It's a game called, I, I mentioned it uh, a couple weeks ago, I think. Our last yeah. week when we talked about um, games in our, our pile of shame, uh, this is a game called uh, Forgotten Anne. Uh, yeah. came out in May for the PC, PS4, and Xbox, and it came out a few weeks ago on the Switch, and that's how I found it, was on the Switch. Uh, and then I found it on sale on PS4, so I, I bought it in there. So uh, this is a, uh, a really beautiful game. It is, uh, I don't know how I want to explain it. It's like, it reminds me of, it's not like anime, but it, it's like what Studio uh, Ghibli is that what it, how you pronounce it? Studio Ghibli, like Ghi- yeah, Studio Ghibli or Ghibli. Something. I can't or Ghibli, Ghibli or Ghibli. I can't remember, but uh, people love his his movies and his art style, and that's exactly what it reminds me of. Like I've I've never seen any of his movies, but I've seen you know some some trailers and stuff like that of his movies. Um, and it reminds me of some like early like you know nineties. On a, like Disney animated movie, like that, that kind of like nice. that style too. Uh, so it's definitely a, like very pleasing to look at, um, and even like some of the actual like cutscenes in the game are stunning, beautiful. Like H- imagine like Lion King or Aladdin and, di- and like HD and stuff. It, it's beautiful. Uh, so this is a game. Uh, it's called like so. It takes place in this in a, in a world called Forgotten Land, and. Basically, what's going on is you're in this in this world or land. I don't know how you want to call it, but um, it's full of like things that we have lost. Like, and this is where they go, like socks, uh, things we've thrown away. Like, so you'll find tables, and uh, there's like a treasure chest. I found there's mops, there's shoes, but like these items that humans have thrown away or lost go here to Forgotten Land, and like there's like this stuff called an anima. Uh, that is like what like it brings them to life essentially and they all like and they all have like normal day jobs and stuff like that so like they work at plants some are cops like there's a there's a magnum gun uh who is who is a (laughs) cop there's a camera that takes pictures at crime scenes uh there's uh there's there's a bunch of them too like some of them are like train conductors there's a refrigerator that's a bartender um but they all like they're all like they all have normal lives but they're, um, you know, they're they're all working and trying to get like, they're they're building. I think it's called the Ether Bridge, is what I think it's called being called. Okay. And it's gonna bring them like they're building it. And there's this guy named Master uh, Bonku, I believe is how to say his name. He's a human, and he basically right. runs the whole place. Uh, and um, he is like he's building this bridge. And like I guess I'm only a few hours in this game, so I don't know how it's gonna go. But building this bridge, and he's like, hey, we're gonna, you get tickets. And you can go back to the human world, and you can go back to your owners, and that's where people want to go. They want like they 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 think they're they're called forgotten links, but they kind of treat it as like the, though they are lost, and they can't like their yeah. owner lost them, and they want to get back. This is how they get back to them. Um, and you play as a woman named Anne, hence the name Forgotten Anne. Uh, and Master uh, Bonku and Anne are the only two humans I've seen so far in this game. And Anne is kind of like the Judge Dread in a way of this of this world. Or she is, she's called the Enforcer, and she has this, uh, like I said, the anima is what gives these items life, and um, she has the ability to, uh, like, she can absorb the anima into this glove, and you can use it to, uh, it's it's mostly the gameplay-wise is, like, a puzzle-solving elements, but she can yes. also, like, uh, take the anima away from these items and basically uh, kill them, I guess, in a way. Like, in the beginning of the game, you can make a, you, you make choices in the game. And the, I don't know, sometimes you don't know if they're, cho- you don't know their choices or not until after you've made a decision. Because yes. um, you don't know, I, like, they'll tell you, oh, this can change the events of the game. I'm like, oh, so I, this one event happened, like, five minutes in, I just restarted the game. I'm like, I, I thought that was, I, I did some I killed something that I thought you were just supposed to kill him. Like, I immediately did it. I'm right. like, I didn't, I didn't want to, but I thought that was what I was supposed to do. So I, I went back, restarted the whole game, let this, um, there's a scarf by the way, that um, I let them live. 
uh, but you can act, you can kill um, these these items throughout the game, and you can uh, find the alts like just like you like I'm searching everything like I'm I'm in, I love this world, um, and I'm like finding everything. It's it's like a two D it's a two D side scroller, but it's like um, you can like move from elements like there's staircases you can take that take like bringing like one stage one screen back one screen forward. Uh, so it's kind of like two and a half D in that sense, I guess. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, like Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, where you can jump in the background and the foreground. Um, right. And but yeah, I'm having fun. Like just finding like there's alternative conversations and characters you can talk to that you totally miss. That I'm loving. Um, the only real issue I have with this game, it's a fairly big one because it's a good chunk. It's also a good chunk of the game is the gameplay. Uh, it is not like just like a way out. Uh, it is not really well uh, defined. Uh, or, I see. Like re- refined, I guess is what I want to use. Uh, where, like, so it's a pl- it's like it's a puzzle platformer, um, but the jumping um, is clunky. Uh, like I don't like when you jump. Like it's not like smooth and like like that. Like snappy. Like you don't feel like you're you feel like you're hitting the button right, but you're not jumping when you want to. So I'm falling off the ledge and have to climb back up. And just the way you jump up on things, like you have to be like perfectly underneath them to jump up and like grab onto the ledge and pull yourself up. Um, right. And you press circle to jump, which I already hate. Um, and just like maneuvering around the environment is not fun for that. Uh, I see. And but the the puzzle parts themselves are I'm having a lot of fun with. They're not so far. I haven't been incredibly hard. There's definitely some like ones you have to think about. I got one where I screwed up the puzzle and I actually had to restart the game because I I just couldn't like i couldn't actually beat it out because i did i i thought i was doing the right thing but i didn't and i ran out of uh, anima uh, that you had to use to like move things around so i had to like actually cancel out the game go back into it and then i figured it out after the after the fact so i just went in and did the thing i was supposed to do uh, but i used up all of it in the environment to to do it and um but yeah i mean for the most part like it, it's definitely really frustrating there's definitely there's like one point where it's a chase scene so you're chasing this uh, one forgotten link and I'm just like constantly falling off ledges and oh, having to climb back up things. And it's just, it's frustrating. Um, but like in a way out, like I'm getting through it. Um, it's just, it's a little more frustrating and more like a way out. It was like, it wasn't really frustrating. It just wasn't really well done. And it was a lot, it was only a small section of the game where this, and it was a small section, but it was the last like little bit of the game. This is like junk, majority of the move of uh, the game is you know going around through the through the world and the environment and this is how you get through them so it's a good chunk of the game is is this platforming um and it's just not fun uh, and that's also how you right. saw puzzles is is you know jumping from platform to platform uh, but like i said everything else about the game i think is near perfect uh it's just this one thing is awful uh, but i i think i'm going to be able to power through it unless they make it more of the game than it might stop me from playing it more and i hope not i hope that's right. not the case because uh, like i said it's a great game uh so far um but that's all i've been playing uh so beating a couple games this week and i've started another potentially really good good one so far um but this week we do have a uh a few topics to talk about uh two of them are nintendo related one of them's kind of like it was a it happened like the last saturday night when we recorded but it didn't really become news until like early early sunday morning uh, and it's right. already been kind of debunked, uh, but uh, Anu uh, Anuma, I think is how you say his name, uh, who is he's basically the guy for Zelda now, the last yeah. decade or so. Uh, they were he came on stage after uh, there was a uh, Zelda concert uh, in Japan in Osaka last Saturday night, and uh, he showed up and he mentioned uh, he. This is what he said. I know what you're. Th- I know what you're thinking. Uh, Skyward Sword for the Switch, right? And that's all he said. And he walked out. And people were losing their minds. It was all over Twitter, <laughs> IGN, GameSpot. Everybody was talking about it. Like, it's coming, guys. People took it as pretty uh, much... Uh, 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 he didn't confirm it, but it was a close thing you can be without confirming it. Um, and then it went on for like four or five days. And then finally, uh, Thursday, I want to say... Wednesday or Thursday, someone came out and said that there is no... As of right now, um, Skyward Sword is not in the works for Switch. Uh, it's not in the plans oh, either. That's uh, funny. But I figured we could still talk about it. Like, 
Of course. You know, I'm talking about because Justin loves that game. And um, at that point with the Wii, I was pretty much over it. Like I, I like, like a lot of the people, I think no one, I was like, ah, I'm just tired of the Wii and the motion control, motion stuff. Um, but it's definitely, uh, and I've heard like mixed things about the game for the most part um, uh, in itself. Just like what, like this was, there was, pe- the, I think a lot of people say like, uh, like this was the game that made Nintendo change Zelda and like to the Breath of the Wild, like totally redo the whole format. Um, but st- I've always said to him, like, it's a game I definitely want to play. I've, I've beaten every Zelda game from uh, pretty much Link to the, yeah, from Link to the Past on, I've beaten, uh, on the main consoles. Uh, so it's, it, this is the, and this is the only one I haven't. Uh, so it's, it's one of, I've always wanted to play cause I feel like I've, I've missed that whole section of Nintendo and, uh, I, I would only, but I'd only want to play it if they, if, um, like I, I'd, I'd be picking this up day one if it was, you know, an HG remake and it looked nice and all that too. That would help, uh, but also got rid of the motion controls. Like that's that would be like my one cat. If they come out, hey, use the Joy Cons. I'm like, all right, well, I'm, I'm out. I'm not gonna play this game. Um, actually, you know, it might be better, but it's then with because you don't have the you don't have the little the the thing you put on top of your TV uh, for for like the Wii did. So it might be better. Yeah, the sensor bar. The sensor bar. Thank you. But uh, I don't know. I I I would. I'm hoping this is true. Oh, not. I'm hoping it does happen. I think it will eventually. Um, but I guess because you you played the game back in the Wii, uh, would you want to? Repl- I don't know if you beat it, but would you want to play this game again? And what are your overall thoughts on this? Well, let's see. For one, I think people are kind of blowing out of proportion what uh, Ag Anua Awanua from. You know, I don't know. Yeah, going don't through, know just talking a little bit about like, uh, you know, just talk a little bit about like maybe like Skyward Sword, blah blah blah, and so on and so forth. But you know how people like kind of like blow things out of proportions, especially if it's like translation errors or something like that. But uh, honestly, I do believe that they will remake Skyward Sword sooner or later. But I don't think now is going to be the time they'll do it, only because there are some rumors that there may potentially be an entirely new Zelda game that may be starting in development at this current time plus at the same point we got plenty of uh, other types of uh, hardcore nintendo stuff that's going to be the main focus upon the next year so if we do see like a remake of this game it'll potentially be around i don't know i want to say that probably the next five years we'll probably see something maybe upon like a remake Mm mm-hmm but uh, as far as the game itself goes, I remember getting it for the Wii. I played maybe a few hours of it max, and it was nothing like bad or anything like that. But uh, it's just one of those Wii games where I played it when it came out. I had other games to play, which took out the vast majority of my time. This was around the time where I started to get heavily into online gaming in terms for consoles. So the Xbox 360, the PS3, and stuff. Around the time it came out, I was already kind of knee deep into going into the PS3, so like a backwards catalog and stuff, and try to take out like uh, various games from that backlog. So the when Skyward Sword came out, it was like pretty much like the, one of the last hurrahs and stuff for the Wii and the library of that system in general, in my opinion. So. The most control stuff was okay, but I kind of did get kind of tired of, like, having to hold my controller up to charge my sword. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, the, yeah, the puzzles were pretty creative for what they were and stuff. And, uh, you know, the going through the whole gyroscope aspects of navigating around your, like, your flying, like, uh, you know, mount. Sort of like this bird creature or something like that that's transferring you to and from certain places. But, uh, I only, like I said before, only made it to, like, about a maybe off of the whole Skyloft stuff, but <sighs> other than that though, I would love to try to give it another go eventually <laughs> soon. Maybe if like uh if there was like an announcement sort of like that, I'd be more prone to play through on the Switch itself, but only after the retail, the controls, so I can actually use my pro controller. Yes. Cause kind of but because to be perfectly honest with you, I am definitely past the whole motion control stuff. I've been past it for a long time now, and I don't have any desire really at the moment to play through an entire Zelda game with just motion control aspects of the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
like I said, the Joy-Con thing might be better with that, without, without having the sensor bar. Yeah. Um, to it, it'd probably be a little more when you have the Rumble. It probably be, it's probably a little better than what we had back then, even with the Wii Motion Plus stuff. But uh, right. Yeah, I don't. I, I agree with you. Where I definitely. Um, but then again, you'll still have like some of the odd stuff, kind of like how we we're playing like the whole Let's Go games and stuff for Pokemon. Yes. Where, we're throwing Pokeballs and stuff, and they're going all the way to the right or going all the way to the left randomly while we're yeah. perfectly throwing them off the center, you know? Yeah. No, that's a great point. Yeah. I mean, even, yeah, we're still seeing that struggles with it with Pokemon Let's Go. Who says, who's going to say that it's going to be, you know, better, uh, you know, with, with, with Zelda. Um, and definitely yeah. another, good, another good example, though, would probably be like, say, look at a game that almost entirely was for like either gyroscope or kind of motion control sort of esque sort of way you know sort of like the whole star fox zero stuff mm -hmm. yeah you know that's that point. game that game would have been a lot better if it would just had regular controls in terms of like a pro controller or whatever and not so much an aspect of having to use the game pad in order to try to move around in order to try to look at different things as well because the best kind of nintendo game experiences that i've had were not me being forced into different type of gimmicky control schemes. They were kind of the solid organic experience where I could pretty much play the game how I wanted with my controller, with any other types of like stuff that was readily available that was wide, you know, wide in availability. Mm -hmm. Instead of like having things kind of like tailor made to either kind of gimmicky controls and stuff from like motion sensors or gyroscope stuff. Because honestly, anytime I have those type of options inside of a game, I usually turn them off because they're a big distraction to me. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, think about it too, especially, like, we've seen games that, like, are required to be played in handheld mode, and we've definitely, yes. I've definitely played games where, like, preferred mode, like the Frederick games, um, are way better in, um, in handheld, like, playing them. Yes, on, they are. With the Pro Controller, or with the Joy-Cons is awful. Um, but, how would this game work if it does have the motion, it wouldn't work at all, I guess, without using having to force gyro in there somehow uh, in handheld mode. So I guess this game pretty much has to be, if it's motion controlled, it's going to have to pretty much be uh, port or uh, docked only, which I highly, I can't see them doing going away, going for, for away from that. Uh, this, especially this early, you know, I mean, it might be a couple years out, but I can't see them going away from it. Um, and with the being able to take it on the go and then also dock it. Um, but uh, you know, like I said, we'll wait and see, I guess. But uh, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful it does happen. So it's uh, I would definitely like to. I missed that game at that time, and I would like to get a chance to go uh, play it and play it the way I, I want to play it, my preferred way of playing it. Um, but moving on, sticking with Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo started uh, what was called the Creators Program. Uh, yes. I believe in 2015, and it was a big deal. A lot of people were pissed. And a lot of big uh, YouTubers uh, and streamers like ref just outright refused to play their games because of it, where yep. they where they pretty much took majority of your of the income people would get from advertisements, stuff like that, monetization of uh, their games on YouTube, especially. Um, or and I've seen people's like videos, like uh, Patrick Klepek, uh He did a whole thing for like a good eight nine months uh where he would stream himself on youtube and have videos for hours a day playing uh uh fuck the what's the the mario maker mario maker yeah and he said like out of the whole thing like he did out hundreds of hours of this and he made like less than ten dollars uh wow. from, from youtube and just they had all the like they had this program you had to, you had to submit to be in it and uh there's all these guidelines you had to follow um, and you pretty much, they took like 80% of your, uh, of the, the money you earned from it. And there was a lot of issues with it too, where people were like, um, would sign up to be in it and the demands where people wanted to get like, they just couldn't keep up with, with it. Like they, so they started this whole program and they didn't have the manpower behind it to keep up with people wanting to be added to the program. Like it would take, take weeks and months to get added to it. Um, wow. and it just put a huge restriction on streaming, like streaming the games. It just kind of, it, it's a weird thing. We saw Persona did it last year, Persona Five, where they did this thing where, like, you they said you can't, you can't stream this game. It's like uh, we will block you or we will ban you or whatever. We'll, we'll basically even put it still, yeah, even still to this day or something like that. They block the cutscenes and stuff, but they can showcase the gameplay of it. 
Yeah, but they they had like in like Dragon Ball Fighters. It's, it seems like it's a very Japan thing right now, and yep. um, uh, you know you see a lot of games nowadays that are like games are in a, in a, a way are being made for streaming now. Like the people, like, especially uh, like like an Overwatch type games. Like these games are like built to be like they're better when you're streaming them or you're playing them online. That's just the way they. they that's where the games games are going nowadays. Um, like a way out. Like that was. A, great game the stream um yep. you're just seeing that more and more of that and you see this old philosophy like and it's just it's just weird uh even you hear about um what sakurai with uh like with uh, when uh brawl came out like he ref- they didn't make another single player mode uh for the for the wii u because the stuff leaked on youtube it's just like they everything's uh, are the, the videos got posted on youtube like the, the day the game came out it's like that shit happens that's just the internet nowadays it's impossible not for it to happen. Uh, whether you true. want it to or not, it's going to happen. Um, and it was just this really weird uh, old school like program they put in place. It was just it kind of prevented like creativity with their videos. And like I said, a lot of like I think Rooster Teeth and a few other big sites for just this hour said, "All right, well we're not we're not going to be part of this anymore." And there's actually like ways for like bigger. Um, YouTube channels to be like to get out of it. I don't know that like the I don't understand like all that stuff. YouTube, but there's ways like they can do all the old stuff that that they they don't have to be in this program. They can get all the things they want. They don't get monetized by Nintendo and all that. And they still were said like outright like no, I'm not doing this. We're not going to deal with the bullshit. Uh, we're not going to support you if you're not going to support us, kind of thing. And I mean, in a way, that's what they're doing. You know, they're out there. They're they're advertising your games. There's a huge audience behind your game, and you're just saying nah, fuck you guys. In a way, um, so they are getting rid of it. Um, it's going away on December 6th. I don't know nice. why. I don't know if something's happening around that time to make them want to get rid of it, but eh, that's going on. Um, I know, right? I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's a, it's a weird date to pick the 6th. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so they're going, they're going away from it. Uh, it, like, I, it's really cool. Like, you always, like, the, when you go on Twitter, you always see a lot of bashing, especially like Nintendo is probably the most bashed, but it's also like the most like. It's it's the most hated and the most loved. Like uh, it's there's you don't see a lot in the middle, uh, and it and it's just kind of crazy to kind of like see like going online, and seeing everybody like you always see like the Nintendo like you always know like all right like I to like admittedly my I, I am like definitely that that person where like I either completely hate something they did or I absolutely love what they did. I'll, I'll gush or I'll bitch. There's no in between really, and it's kind of cool seeing like that non Nintendo gushing people like side of like Twitter and stuff like that and Reddit and everything. And it's like, everybody was like, like, this is like, finally, this is cool. Like, we're not like, we're not like saying, we're not going to forgive you for this kind of thing, but like you're doing like, we're going to give you complete credit for just doing the right thing. Um, I, I think this is, I think this is a, a really cool thing to do. Um, and, uh, what about you Gables? Yeah. I humbly agree, honestly, because it was crap to begin with, the way they were doing things in terms of like the monetization process and also of uh, barring certain YouTubers from actually going through and showing footage and stuff of games and stuff. And like, even if they were using things for like fair use and stuff, people would get dinged on YouTube or get dinged on like, say, like Twitch or something without like consent or something from Nintendo itself. So, from this company actually going forth and sort of pulling the curtains uh, you know pulling the curtains down and kind of exposing themselves really to the world in terms of uh their whole gameplay stuff it kind of re- kind of resorts back to like say some of the early days of people going through and just uh uploading like nintendo stuff with like different types of commentary and stuff people can actually start doing stuff like that again and quite honestly the people who i have followed on youtube in terms of like let's players and stuff actually have started drifting back to going through and uploading more nintendo stuff and that is pretty awesome because hell a lot of them made their you know made their gaming like career or something like that based around playing nintendo games so it's definitely a win-win for everyone in this situation i mean i really kind of wish this hadn't happened at all because that was a shitty move by nintendo but at the same time I'm glad that I can actually go forth and legitimately, if I wanted to, upload certain, like, say, Let's Plays or do streams of Nintendo content without having too much to fear in terms of 
Then I'm watching over my bags. Like, oh, this is not appropriate. Oh, this is not this or that. You know, it's. But uh, yeah, yeah, I no. feel like it's okay. Yeah, it's it, it's it's definitely the right way to go, and it's it's definitely like it's. It feels like. That maybe there's a, I don't know maybe there's a changing of their like their philosophy, and things. Uh, They've especially, changed a lot of their philosophy over the past yeah, five years. That's for sure. True, but yeah, especially the, just with, since like the switch was revealed. Um, so, and I hope I think this is you know, one another big step in that. Just kind of getting, in a way, getting with the times, and also kind of future proofing yourself because, like I said, like streaming and YouTube, it's just it's the way of the future. Um, and I mean, obviously, it's a big deal. Like, and they know that because with the directs and everything go, that they do now, like YouTube and Twitch is. And streaming is big, very important to them, and especially with like them, like with you, with uh, E three when they have like their Nintendo World Championships and their Treehouse stuff, yep. like that, like they're all over that, and um, so they know very well how important that stuff is, and it's it's cool to see that. It's a cool thing that they're doing. Um, but moving on to our last topic, real quick, um, it is uh, this came out last week, but we just we went really long last week, so I just kind of held it over for this week. But it is one of my favorite things of the month. It is the NPDs. Um, so this is NPDs is like is money earned for the previous month comes out usually towards the end um, of every month, and it, it t- talks about the sales for the previous month. So this is all for October, um, and this actually went from October sixth through I believe November fourth or fifth. So it kind of okay. so um, go through. The, this is the top twenty list real quick. Uh, Going starting from 20, uh, we had NHL 19, 19, Breath of the Wild, 18, Diablo 3, and I assume that's because of the Switch, uh, 17, Super Mario Odyssey, 16, GTA 5, 15, Mario Kart 8, 14, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 13, My Hero 1's Justice, I don't know what that is, 12, uh, Lego DC Super Villains, 11, Forza Horizon, 4, Forza Horizon 4, 10, WWE 2K19, 9, Madden 19, 8, Marvel Spider-Man, 7, FIFA 19, 6, Soul Calibur 6, 5, Mario Party, 4, NBA 2K19, 3, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, 2, Red Dead Redemption 2, and surprisingly, number 1, uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Um, huh. Yeah, so, I mean, does anything kind of stand out to you as far as uh, the sales for last month? Well, honestly, freaking Black Ops 4 being number 1 is definitely a surprise, especially with Red Dead. Yeah. Front and center and that late release schedule and stuff of October. Yeah, um, that's definitely true. I think part of it helps though is uh, Red Dead came out on the 26th and Black Ops came out on the 12th. And I think there's a lot of big, uh, a lot of public, uh, a lot of good buzz around uh, Black Ops 4 too, especially with the blackout mode. I think a lot, yeah, it's a lot more successful than I think most people thought. Um, but yeah, I mean, even still with having two weeks more on that sales time, um, I was still surprised. I still think in the end, um, RDR, RDR two. Will probably will probably blow away Black Ops Four. Um, it it definitely I feel like will blow it out in terms of like replayability, in terms of like uh, the online mode probably getting adjusted and this and that. But yeah, yeah. We're, I mean, the online came out. It's in beta right now. Um, and I mean, you look at just GTA Five, how that's doing, uh, high selling game of all time. It's I it, it kind of almost like. Uh, in one sense, I'm kind of happy to see it falling. GTA 5. In the other sense, I kind of want to see how long this goes on for. But that game's been in the top 10 pretty much every month for years now. Uh, and now <laughs> it's dropped. True. Yeah, it's dropped on the 16. So uh, it's going but, down the charts finally. Yeah, it, Mario Kart 8 has outsold it last month. Uh, but yeah, you look at the top six is all games that came out in October. You got Soul Calibur 6, which is cool to see it up there. Uh, Mario Party, band number five, is really impressive. It is. Um, uh, that that's cool to see. But I, I wonder too, also having the Joy-Con bundle. Like this is based. This is individual sales. This is you know dollars earned. So you look at like, you know, all the you know uh, the top six games. They all have really expensive bundles you can buy. Um, right. So you know, like Mario Party has a hundred dollar bundle, which I bought. Uh, NBA two K two K nineteen has like a hundred dollar edition you can buy. Odyssey wow. has a hundred fifty dollar edition. RDR I'll two had a hundred. And Black Ops 4, I think, had 100. It has, like, six different versions you can buy. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's cool to see. Like, you know, it's, uh, Breath of the Wild still hanging on there. Mario Odyssey still hanging on. Diablo yep. 3 jumping back in. That game came out uh, on the Switch last uh, towards the end of October. And it's on, you know, it's sitting there at 18. 
um, to a nice little boost. Uh, Forza Horizon 4, despite being a uh, Games Pass game, still holding on at number 11. It was in the top 10 last month, but still doing really well cool. in the in the 11th spot. Yeah, so it's cool to see. But also with, um, I don't usually go over this, but I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, this is the, uh, they, they, have, they also release a, uh, updated standings every month. It is the top 10 selling games of the year. And this isn't just games that came out this year. It's just overall right. sales for the year. Uh, so um with that uh so far cry 5 is, has been the most ex- high selling game since it came out in march uh wow. and now it got passed not only by call of duty black ops 4 but red dead redemption 2 so in nine days red dead redemption 2 outsold uh what far cry 5 has done in the last eight months black ops 4 not surprised it sold it outsold it in three weeks what it's done in eight months um so yeah that's kind of that's press see but actually the top 10 for that also is uh Call of Duty World War II, 9 is GTA 5, 8, Madden 19, 7, Monster Hunter World, the highest, nice. one of the highest selling games. Then came out in January, but still, it's very impressive. 6, God of War, 5, NBA 2K19, that's another game that uh, came out last month that's already jumped into the top 5. 4, Marvel Spider-Man's one, it's the highest selling, and that's, I mean, God of War and uh, Spider-Man being console exclusives, that's very impressive to see. It is. Uh, 3, Far Cry 5, like I said, 2, RDR2. And Call of Duty Black Ops 4, number one. So, uh, really impressive. I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see uh, what next month looks like. So, I want to see where um, the game we can't talk about uh, until Friday, how that sits, and especially with. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. We won't see that until January. Never mind. Damn it. Uh, but I guess, you know, next month we'll see. Uh, uh, I was hoping that we could see RDR2 versus the game we can't talk about, uh, how that does. But I guess we won't know until January. Um, but yeah, that will pretty much do it for this week, guys. I think, um, if you, uh, like this, we have a bunch of places you can check us out on. Uh, we have the Facebook page and group, Drunk Dressers Podcast, like and join us on there. On Twitter, uh, even though I accidentally kind of lot got us kicked off of Twitter earlier today, um, by That's... accident. Yeah. So it, I, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm in the process of getting it back, but when it gets back, <laughs> it's, it'll be at Drunk Dressers Pod. You get asked me to, if I want to put the birth date in for the uh for the for our channel i'm like sure fuck yeah let's do that so i, I put in may 25th which is the uh, 2013 which is the day that we recorded the first podcast ever um uh-huh. for the show and i put it in there and it says like hey whether you're a business or it's a personal website whatever or personal personal page whatever put the put the year in there i'm like all right cool so i put it in there 2013 um because it's tech, it's not really a business but it's it's not a person um but uh Put that in there, and then it immediately locked us out, and it said, "Hey, you have to be 13 to have a Twitter account." I'm like, well, what the fuck? Like, this isn't this isn't a person. So I had to like send oh, no. a bunch of information in. Uh, I got a thing; they're working on it. Hopefully, we'll have it back uh, in the next couple of days or so. But when it's back, at Drunkenness Pod, so check us out on there. <laughs> so yeah, uh, stupid Tyler. Um, but um, on Twitch.tv slash Drunkenness Podcast, but actually, better yet, Twitch.tv slash Colonel Gables. Uh, he, he's been doing streaming pretty much every night, at least what, three, four, five times a week. Yeah, pretty much. You know, I've been streaming a lot so I can get like, uh, try to become a Twitch affiliate yeah. eventually, but I'm just testing the waters at the moment, just playing a couple of the games that I've been loving so far from this year. And eventually I want to try to make it so that I could stream potentially Nintendo games sooner or later. So <laughs> it's going to be a different type of, uh, experience come the next year. Yeah. So uh, he's doing that. So go out there and support him. Follow him, please. Uh, and then send him a friend request too, actually. Um, and then also on iTunes, uh, Drunk Dash with the podcast. Subscribe to us. Uh, give us a five star review. Leave us a comment, please. And then also on YouTube at Drunk Dash Nerds. Subscribe. The podcast goes up there. Give us a big thumbs. Excuse me, thumbs up. Uh, comment, please. The more people that give us good reviews, thumbs ups comments descriptions whatever the more likely is other people can see us and like i said um the way uh, if you want to see some of the, the i think the best parts of our stream last night i clipped those out and i put them up separately on our youtube page uh so <laughs> go in there they're, they're pretty funny i think uh, i laughed at i'm watching them again uh so yeah check us out in all those places uh thanks again for listening i was your host i was tyler and i have been colonel gables so until next time everyone Have yourself a good weekend. Play yourself some good games. Most importantly of all, thank you for enjoying another fun-filled episode of the Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast. Hey, hey Gables. Yeah. Too sweet. Too sweet. Bye, guys. See ya. See ya.